Topic 9, coordinate geometry and review of things that you need to know for Topic 9. First, we're going to start with the distance formula. The distance formula is just that. It's a formula that finds the distance between two points on a graph. Now, it looks like this as for the formula, but many students prefer, instead of the distance formula, they prefer you to solve, like for the hypotenuse, of a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. But that is easier done if you have a graph. If you don't have a graph, use the distance formula using the coordinates, the red coordinates and the blue coordinates, and it literally is using the Pythagorean theorem, but it's set up for you in a way where you don't actually have to have the graph drawn out. Midpoint formula, midpoint, point in the middle. So if you have a segment and you need to figure out the point in the middle, you take the two end points and plug them into this formula. And this will give you the point exactly in the middle. Slope formula. First of all, you need to know what slope is. It's the rise and run of a line on a graph. And so it is literally the change in the y's divided by the change in the x's. So the difference or change in the y over the difference or change in the x's. It's the rise over run. This is the slope formula. Pythagorean theorem, hopefully you're really familiar with that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared if you have a right triangle. So even on a graph, you can use this. If you have two points, then A squared plus B squared, which you can count on a graph, you can do the math to figure out what C is. On a graph, you can never count anything that has any kind of diagonal or slope on it. So that's the Pythagorean theorem. Here's some review. We're going to do, go over properties of parallelograms. So first of all, a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent and the opposite angles are congruent. So across from each other. Consecutive angles, one right after each other, like right consecutive means one right after or in direct order. They will add up to be 180 degrees. They're supplementary and the diagonals will bisect each other. A rectangle is a parallelogram, so all those properties apply, the parallelogram properties, plus each angle is 90 degrees, and the diagonals are exactly the same. They're congruent. Properties of a rhombus, also a parallelogram, but all four sides are the same, so they're all congruent. Diagonals, when they intersect, they become 90 degrees right here, so those are perpendicular, and the diagonals bisect each of these angles. So this angle will be bisected as well as this. This angle will be bisected as well as that one. Properties of a square. Now a square is very unique because it actually doesn't have any of its own properties. A square is a parallelogram, so all those properties work. A square is a rhombus, all those properties work. And, and it's a rectangle, so all of those properties work. But what's crazy is that a square doesn't have any properties only to itself. Okay, a trapezoid is a four-sided figure, but it's not a parallelogram because it only has one pair of parallel sides. We call those bases. An isosceles trapezoid is still a trapezoid, but it has these two sides of the bases. These two sides, those legs, they are congruent. So the angles on the lower bases, those are congruent. The angles on the upper base, those are congruent. And then when the, you have the two, the lower, upper and lower, upper and lower angles, those two are supplementary because of the parallel lines. See? And then if it is an isosceles trapezoid, then the diagonals are congruent only with an isosceles trapezoid. Kite. Kite is also a quadrilateral four-sided figure, but not a parallelogram. They have two pairs of consecutive congruence. So if you look at these red lines, these are congruent. And the blue lines are congruent, but they're not all congruent to each other. Otherwise, that would be a rhombus. The diagonals are perpendicular and congruent non-vertex angles. So these are the vertex angles. So like if you think about it, it's the short side, the short diagonal right here. These two angles will always be congruent. All right, that's the perfect review. Now we have one more new thing in this topic nine, and that is the equation of a circle. You will be using this equation in geometry as well as algebra two and beyond. So this is one of those formulas you really need to know. So it is x minus h squared, y minus k squared equals r squared. Now this is derived from the Pythagorean theorem. And we can go over that in another video, but just so you know, that's where this comes from. 
So H and K, that's the center point. So wherever it is on the graph, the X value is the H, the Y value is the K, and then the R is radius. That makes sense. And like always, I've left you some extra space here where you could put your own flashcards if needed. I hope that helps.